Welcome back to My Hero Academia Anime Review, episode number 31. This is where I'm viewing the 71st episode of the anime, Sun Eater of the Big Three. And two finger chong, Sir Kenneth, you can see it pronounced, yes. This episode is adapted from chapters 139 to 141 in the manga. And yes, it does fully adapt the entirety of these three chapters. Unless, and this is this is something you do occasionally. They did this also kind of last season as well in order to speed up basically of how much, like, how long it will take to adapt an entire arc. And thanks to this episode, there is exactly 21 chapters left to adapt. Yep, 21 left. Because it's arc ended at chapter 162. <coughs> Excuse me. Starts off pretty much where the last episode left off with the heroes. Well, the police basically going splitting off into two different locations. One goes through one door, the other going to another. They basically run through a hallway, and then of course Night Eye stops at a flower vase because this is the entrance to the underground. They get they open the door up and three goons pop out. Lucky enough, Bubble Girl and Centipede basically subdued him. So, like, okay, we'll handle these two guys. You guys go down. And I was like, okay. Yeah. You heard her. Get down there. They get down there, and then they come across. Like, they run for a while, and they come across a wall. So, a million basically used to be And it's also that his costume is lined with his own hair. So, he's able to pass through stuff while wearing this suit and not ha go completely naked. Which is quite interesting. So he looks through, and yeah, it's perfectly hallway. Apparently, this is done through, like, somebody's quirk. So, basically, Red Ryan Deku just blasts away through the wall. And then we see the director facility, who's this little imp guy. You see him. Now, in the manga, they don't show this at all. It's basically or him already, basically, in, in the process. This is something he added to the end, which I think is great, the fact that he added this. Because if you read the manga, it's like, okay, what the heck happened? And how the heck was this accomplished? <coughs> Excuse me. How this was accomplished was the fact he took the cork enhancing drug and had him submerged with the walls and sort of reshaped the place. So they have Lemillion go off on his own, and everybody else, including some officers, drop right through, drop like one floor. They're probably bruised up, but they're not hurt. And they come across three guys who work for. Who work for Overhaul, and these guys' names are Sensetsu, Hojo, and Toby. Sensetsu basically is the guy who actually can, well, has the ability to grab stuff and basically produce blades. Yeah, basically his ability is very similar to that of the, of the ability of Snatch, used from the character Bond from. Seven Deadly Sins. Very similar ability. Hojo basically can create icicles from his own body. Toby uh, can just, well, eat stuff. And he looks like the freaking Scarecrow. Yeah, Senso basically has got the no mask. Overhaul has <coughs> the um the bird mask he's known for wearing. As for Hojo, he wears a Surge's mask. Mm -hmm. That's basically what he wears. And basically, Sunday decided to stay behind himself to deal with these three himself. While everyone else goes running off on their own. And look how Eraserhead races since his ability briefly and takes out Hojo pretty quickly. So they leave him off on his own. And the whole rest of the episode is Sun Eater versus these three guys. And he basically has to basically use Octop he uses an octopus briefly. And it basically all turned into a Kraken. He fights them really well. The specific he's sort of overwhelmed by about three guys. He's able to subdue them by the end of the episode. It takes a good long while. It takes about it takes most of the episode just to subdue these guys. While this is going on, we see flashback to when he first met Mario back in middle school. Yes, he first met him there. We first showed up at school, but he could barely understand what the heck he's saying. And then Mario introduces himself to him. To him and they sort of show how they became fast friends. And he's also one came, who gave him his uh, code name of Sun Eater. And then basically he, defeat, they, he defeats these three guys 
by using a combination of octopus, kraken, and a bird's talon. Basically, his claws from his feet. <coughs> so basically, he's able to stomp on on them and just basically take them out. And that's where the episode ends. Yep. Overall, really good episode. I would say the only addition they they actually changed, the only thing they changed was the movie Lion and when they stormed the mansion. When they saw the mansion, where Fat Gum apologizes for not removing their shoes, in the in the English dub version of it, they actually do not have the lion at all. They just basically have them barge right in. Overall, really good episode. Now talk about new chapter in the manga. By the way, Endeavor is nowhere to be seen in this chapter. It seems like this is sort of a possibly new arc, but I'm not really sure. Basically, a chapter starts off a UA. We have in Janet basically. Gabby settled in, and everybody basically started off a new year, and apparently it's all fired up, and, well, and then, of course, then we cut to the girls' locker room, we see Otaku in her costume, apparently it's an improved costume, somewhat, yeah, it does look like it's a big upgrade from her previous costume, I mean, it has a slight appearance change, I mean, I think they removed the, the visor, is pretty much removed from her head, and apparently... It, the helm is like a lot more heavier than it used to be. And then, of course, they, then you have Pinky looking through something. You see like an All Might doll. And very heavily implying that, well, uh, that, well, she also blushes the fact that, well, it's, well, hinted, this is basically what's revealed during her training arc, that her feelings for Deku basically resurfaced, and she's trying to figure out a way to tell her, tell him, eventually. And we got to the boys' locker room, where everybody just simply just getting, changed their costumes. <coughs> they talk about their ability. They don't talk about the, what they did with Endeavor. Nope, Endeavor is not even mentioned this whole chapter. And, of course, they all saw about the Green Matter, and they cut to the outside, and it's All Might. Yeah, first time in quite a while he's been seen. I mean, I think, like, the last physical appearance he made was back at the start of the previous arc of the series. That was like chapter, I think the last parents was after like 219. This is chapter 253. So it's been like, oh my gosh. It's been like, um, I think it's been like 20, no, I think it's been like 30, I think it's been like 34 chapters since his last no appearance. So it's been quite some time. And basically he says make some kind of candy. And they were asked, like, where's Razor? It's like, he said to leave. So, and apparently, President Mike is driving him someplace. Yeah, this is President Mike. I have a look at him. He teaches English at UA. So they drive to Tartarus to meet up with possibly the creator. First, they meet up with Gran Torito. Which is something because this is his first appearance in quite some time. I think like his last no physical appearance in the series was I I don't remember when it was his last appearance. It seemed like it'd been longer for him than All Might. <coughs> yeah. So so basically they're here to meet with possibly the creator of the Nemu, because they brought up here. So this guy apparently they say he's the censor of the League of Villains. It's implied this could be all for one, but they don't really say who it is. They, they it's not really him. Apparently, isn't some kind of Shuta? Apparently, it looks like he's some kind of genius or whatever. And apparently, says the man. Sorry, Red resemblance to a man. Uh, the man once known as Sacra Sacramento. Orbit, Orbito. Oborio. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yes. Yes. So, this chapter. Um, it's interesting. It feels as though this is just feels like a... Like the start of a new arc. That's what it feels like anyways. Because I felt as though the last arc wasn't very long of an arc. I'd say it was probably about five or six chapters. It was pretty quick. 
because you have basically Deku, Shudo, and Bakudo back at the school. First time since they started this particular arc that the classmates but characters been seen. Also surprisingly, despite the fact we show the girls' locker room, um, let me take a look at this again. I don't think that Froppy or Momo make an appearance in this chapter. No, which is quite surprising. I know Pinky does, and this what Girl does, but I don't think anybody else does. Let's see. Hmm. Oh yeah, Froppy does show up in the chapter, but her appearance is basically like a one-panel cameo. Yep, she's seen with Pinky, and then after, I don't think she's seen after that. Actually, no, she does make one appearance, and with Momo. Yeah, some of the, two of my favorite characters, and Earjack makes an appearance here too. She appears for about two pages of the chapter, and that's all you see of her throughout the rest of the chapter. It's like it goes by really quick, and Jenny is there for like the first like one, two, like first three pages, and he comes back like right after that for, and then he pretty much like shows off like one page, and that's all you see of him. All my is pretty much reduced to a one page, and. Me. But yeah, it's kind of an odd of a chapter where, like, Froppy, like, the last time she was seen was actually at the start of the current arc. I think it was last time she was seen, like, a lot of the characters simply that was the last time they were seen. And this chapter didn't really accomplish very much for the series. It's just basically just a fresh start for the series. It's not like, so it feels like sort of a start of a new arc per se what the arc is going about i have no idea last arc was simply put in endeavor's redemption like the last few chapters of his redemption this are this particular chapter just is like okay back to school and having all my favorite classes which is fine but it's kind of weird though you have no chapter for the manga and you have the characters only appear about two or three pages. Seriously? Why? I mean, Deku himself appears about five pages the whole chapter. Five pages. And he's the main character. He used appears for a good chunk of the chapter. Or at least maybe a small cameo. But five pages? Seriously? Utako appears about four pages. And that's all you see at the character. Froppy appears about a chapter. My favorite female character series. And she appears for like two panels. And she says nothing. Momo shows up for like one page. Yeah, Momo. The woman who basically is also most crazy, who in the English of the anime is voiced by Colin Clickbeard. Here she's here for like one panel. Like one tiny panel cameo. And that's all you see of the character. I'm like, seriously? You take one of the most great one 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 of the best character female characters in the series and you reduce her to a panel cameo? Same thing with Froppy. I am not like the way the writer is dealing with Froppy this these the last couple of times she's shown up, where she's basically reduced to basically a one-panel cameo. I hope they do more with her in the future. I hope they do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's it for this particular review. I don't think I have time to do another review tonight. So I'll probably save case close to do tomorrow, along with news reviews for One Piece and Baruto. Okay, but you see you next few. Bye.